The second way of understanding the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, on a cloudy day, and if you are going on a vacation, what is one thing you want on your vacation? The sun, right? You'll hate those cloudy days. On a cloudy day, you hope any minute the clouds will break and you get the sunlight. During the occultation of the imam, the believers constantly have the hope that at any moment God will bless them with the reappearance of their imam. Believers never lose that hope. They always hold on to that hope and they're optimistic and they're hopeful. Some people in this world are very pessimistic. You think of the future, you're pessimistic. You think of the world that's going to unfold in two decades I know some people lose sleep at night because of this. Some people don't have children because of this. You want me to have children for this ugly world? Look at what the world is coming to. Have hopes. Yes, there is a lot of corruption going on around the world. But never lose hope. Just like you hope for the sun to shine on you from those clouds, always have that hope that the spiritual son of Al-Imam Al-Mahdi can shine on you at any moment. That's another way of understanding the application of this hadith. The third way of understanding the application of this hadith, if you want to benefit from sunlight, it depends on how much devices you have to benefit from the sun and how much you allow yourself to be exposed to the sun. If you go into a building with no windows, you're not going to get any sunlight. The more windows you have, the more sunlight you have. And those fancy penthouses, they have all glass around, right? Because you want that sunlight. Today you have solar technology, solar power. You can produce all this electricity from the sun. So the sun is there, it's shining. It's always shining. It's always giving you energy. If you have the appropriate tools and devices, you'll benefit from the sun. Or you can lock yourself up in some building without windows and not benefit from the sun. That's up to you. Similarly, during the occultation of Imam al-Mahdi, the more you open your window to the rays of his guidance, the more you will be guided. But you have to open that window. That's another beautiful analogy about the sun and the Imam alayhi salam. But truly, the imam of our time is a blessing. You have an imam. Connect with your imam on a daily basis. You wake up in the morning, thank Allah for this blessing and say, Oh Allah, you've given me a leader, an infallible leader who represents all prophets. He is my savior. Today, I will be a good soldier to my savior. When I go to work, I will not cheat anyone. I will not defraud anyone. I will not lie to anyone because I want to be a good soldier for my imam. And the month of Ramadan is the best time to reflect on that, my dear brothers and sisters. And feel the barakah and the blessings of your imam. We all have pain. We all have suffering. We all want solutions. One of the best solutions that God has given you is your connection with the imam of our time. You know how much hope he gives you, how much positive energy he gives you. Today, people, one of their struggles is they feel insecure. We spend billions of dollars on safety, right? Keeping our society safe. The biggest fear in any relationship is what? There's no safety in that relationship. I'll get backstabbed and betrayed in that relationship. That's the biggest fear in relationships. We all have feelings of insecurity. One way by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cures your feelings of insecurity is by giving you an infallible imam who's compassionate, who cares about you, he acknowledges you, and you connect with him on a daily basis. That eases your concerns. You know you have an imam who's watchful, who's watchful over you, who's aware of what happens for you. Read dua and nudba, my dear brothers and sisters. Normally we read these supplications as a ritual. Read them with deep analysis. Can you show me words more beautiful than that? You're saying, oh Allah, grant me the compassion of my Imam, Imam al-Mahdi. 
Grant me his love. Grant me his dua. Grant me his dua. In the morning when you wake up, you say, my imam, today I want you to pray for me. And if on that day your imam prays for you, that will be a beautiful day. But he is truly the solution to our problems. In Dua Al-Iftitah, which you, write, you recite every night in the month of Ramadan, there is a beautiful passage that reminds you that all of our solutions and problems, God will solve them. All of our problems, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will solve them through the Savior, through Al-Imam Al-Mahdi. The one passage that really affects me when I read Dua Al-Iftitah is the following. Allahumma shfi bihi suduran. Oh Allah, heal our hearts with the Imam of our time. We all have pain in our hearts. We all suffer. All of you have pain. Could be a disease, a family problem, a financial struggle. We all have pain. Don't lose hope. Connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Connect to the Imam of your time. And Allah will heal your heart through an Imam al-Mahdi. And those who await their Imam, who stay firm and work for justice, preparing for their Imam, according to a hadith from Imam Zain al-Abidin salam, they are the best of human beings throughout history. Imam Zain al-Abidin salam, in this hadith, he tells his companion Abu Khalid, he speaks about the ghaybah, the occultation, the end of times. People who will go through the most difficult struggles, but they hold on to their faith. The Imam says those people, God has given them so much intellect. Such that even though their Imam is absent, but they feel as their Imam is present with them. They are afdalu ahli kulli zaman. They are the best people throughout history. Because they have the highest level of patience and the highest level of intellect. So our Imam is a blessing that we constantly need to thank Allah for. Allahumma kullu